What's going on time clan? It is your boy King Tynex back here with another video and you guys already know the deal. This is going to be what if Issei had Ma had Magneto's powers or what if Issei was a mutant. And of course I have to give my credits to Neptune for helping with the script as well. I mainly like the... How should I say it? Mainly when it came on to like just or forming the idea you could say and yeah um, I will leave the link to her stuff in the description her Wattpad as you guys already know she is working on her own stuff on the side so go and support her as well but let's get on to the video since I've been holding guys on for long enough the mutant gene it was something that many people uh, found, them found themselves curious about throughout the centuries. People would often question the origins of such a gene. This one gene that would allow for certain people in their world to basically become gods among men, while others, they would become freaks of nature going by appearance that is while some they may have the ability to create storms others they would become social outcasts due to their appearances say you started to look like a chicken for whatever reason or your insides were now your outsides basically like say you had your muscular system on the outside of your body all of a sudden you just wake up like that and that is your mutant gene it was random you could say and people would have to live with that people guessed that the origins of these people this gene that basically related each of them to each other was based around a disease that had ran rap rampant during the early centuries of humanity well that was at least a couple that was a couple people's ideas but others would mention how it seemed to be rather far-fetched for just one disease to cause for such a change in the human chemistry to allow such a gene like that to exist. Others though would suggest something that was equally but maybe semi plausible maybe uh, more more so makes sense you could say. Uh, they had their own theory about how the gene came into play and that theory was simply that it came from aliens. Aliens experimented on humans or aliens decided to procreate with humans one day and this gene was created because of it. Now nobody knew for Satan but when it came on to a certain brown haired boy you see he honestly couldn't care less when it came on to the origin of this gene whatsoever. You see he was a mutant himself and he honestly kind of hated it. He never asked to be a mutant after all. Mutants were discriminated against in the modern world. Originally people they were used to worship them like they were actual gods but in the last couple of centuries people began to sing a different tune when realizing that these guys bled you see they were still human but they were somehow granted uh, power to potentially destroy the world they, ba they basically had the finger of god in their hands at all times and they could use it to do practically whatever they felt like and with how imperfect a human being is people feared that fact the fact that imperfect beings such as themselves were given such power it meant that one day 
one bad day a mutant would just be the one to end the whole human existence or the entire world the government would make sure to closely monitor each mutant they would make sure from from their conception as a matter of fact that some would be watched over while others they would try and keep a uh, close watch on them whenever they woke up you could say their mutant genes some they had to wait a couple of years to activate usually through some sort of trigger but others they didn't necessarily need any form of trigger and when it came on to parents of mutants as well and if the parents themselves were mutants oh the government made sure to especially keep a close eye on them because there was uh, uh how should i say this a 95 percent chance that their offspring was going to be a mutant as well and with potentially even stronger abilities and Issei he was no exception to being watched although his parents didn't necessarily have mutant genes or anything that was awakened you could say Issei was a different story Issei at first lived a pretty normal childhood that was until he reached the age of 8 that was when he first discovered his mutant ability. He was just trying to protect the girl from getting hit by rocks that were being thrown at her by some older kids. The reason for why these kids were throwing rocks at her was because she rejected one of those kids' offer of going out on a date with them. And they would try and take out their embarrassment on the girl by having their friends come and help him throw rocks at her probably mentioning how she was a witch or something along those lines Issei would step in though at the at the very moment he noticed what was going on he would be hoping to be a hero in this situation and scare away the bullies but it it really didn't work I'm, I'm gonna be honest it didn't work at all at first instead he just got pummeled with rocks as well but everybody had a breaking point and this was Issei's breaking point that very day one of the bullies would actually pick up a brick this time around and he would throw it at Issei time would practically slow down for Issei at this moment at first these guys were just throwing pebbles and small rocks but now these guys were taking out bricks Issei felt as if his life was really in danger at this moment and this would have been his trigger he would lift his hands up and it felt like something just clicked in his mind at that moment he would manage to create his very own force field and block the attack at that moment as well. The bullies would freeze, realizing at this moment what this meant. Issei, <laughs> he was a freak of nature. He he was a mutant. The they, the the bullies, all of them, they would just run away in fear of the boy and his potential abilities. They did not want to die here. Issei. He would be confused but he would turn around to face the girl and kneel down to give her a hand. She was on the ground but she witnessed everything that Issei had just done. Well it wasn't really that much but the fact that he made a force feel already, already said enough. Her eyes they were full of fear. 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 <laughs> she would swat away his hand and she would pick herself up. She would run away as well from Issei, all while calling him a freak. This hurt Issei to be called a freak, especially by the person that he was trying to protect. It didn't get much better from me from, from here on out either. You see, word would spread fast about Issei being a mutant and Many students would immediately decide to distance themselves from Issei, 
most refuse to even look in Issei's direction or in the eye throughout the years except for one person one person with orange hair he at first thought this person was a boy though <laughs> yeah they lived close by to each other as well so the two would usually end up finding themselves hanging out with each other after school many people were trying to pick on arena for or like what's it irena yeah, i think it was irena on irena for hanging out with a mutant until she told Issei about them Irina was essentially Issei's only friend throughout the years, so he didn't take kindly to people bullying her. He found his powers were growing every day as well, and every time that he heard that somebody trying to bully Irina, he would use his powers on them. This was basically his way of training, of training his abilities, beginning to master each and every last one of them. Issei would become notorious for beating up people that tried to even look at Irina wrong. People would recognize Issei from his signature levitation ability, something that he hadn't gotten the hang of in only a couple of years. He really did like the thought of just flying around. Issei usually levitated practically everywhere as well to always actively train his abilities but this was also meant to show a form of superiority this was meant to also well be his form of confidence boost you could say he was trying to always have a false bravado when he tried to levitate he would always boast about how he was a mutant and how he was better than these weak human beings and that Irina was also better than them because she had wised up to the fact that mutants were just genuine, generally better than regular humans. But everybody knew, well not everybody, but Issei knew on the inside that he was just trying to bluff you could say. In all honesty, he was still pretty insecure. By the time he and Irina were in high school though, Issei had learned several new skills with the mutant gene he was handed at birth. Sure, he was still, still basically a social outcast and the government, the government was watching his every move every day, but he eventually got somewhat used to it. People feared him and for a good reason. One of his latest abilities he found out was to literally take control of the iron in people's blood and pretty much just control that person's actions moving forward to lose control of your body. It was something anybody would find to be terrifying on their own. And then Issei had a multitude of other abilities to stack on top of that? <laughs> yeah, I Irina, she was pretty much the main reason why he didn't use it more often. She kept him grounded in a sense and was also the reason why he became confident in his abilities as well. She would usually spout some nonsense about how Issei's powers, they were a gift from God and how he shouldn't abuse them but it would be preferable that he rather help people with them. Issei was hesitant in believing this though. The main reason for that being because of just how destructive his powers were. He found it pretty far fetched for for someone like Irina's god you could say to and give him such destructive powers with the intent for him to help people. After all, it would make more sense for Issei to be given the ability to heal people rather than control, I don't know, the electromagnetic spectrum. <laughs> he had a feeling he wasn't even reaching the tip of the iceberg when he came onto his powers either. 
what was there really that much more to his powers? If so, how would he discover them? This was something that would plague Issei's mind day in and day out as well. Issei wasn't interested in world conquest or anything, at least not yet. Issei's parents would also end up transferring their son to the Kuo Academy during his second year of high school in order to be part of a less hostile environment. His parents still loved and cared for him, but the schools Issei was a part of didn't show the same amount of compassion. They also had a feeling that if Issei was continuously put into these toxic environments, then his mind may be shaped in the wrong sort of way and he may actually be a danger later on. Although he's a minor threat you could say for right now, considering how he will act up against the bullies of Irina, he was nothing that the government should really write home about. It was his potential that they would usually be fearing, you could say, not his actions. Kuo Academy now. It was an all-girls academy up until recently, so that meant the female populace at the school would most likely dom dominate over the boys. And Issei's parents, they were hoping that Sending Issei to a mostly girls school would allow for him to be in a less hostile environment. Females were naturally less aggressive and were more nur nurturing than their male counterpart. Issei was hesitant, was hesitant though until Irina informed him that her parents were also enrolling her into Kuo Academy. And as long as Irina was with Issei, he would be moderately fine in the new environment. The first week was a bit weird for Issei though. Throughout the, the year, he did have some conflicts, but there were a whole lot less than when he went to a more balanced school in terms of the male to female ratio. The next year though, Issei would be approached by a girl. She had jet black hair and she would introduce herself as Yuma. She would bring up how she was a foreign exchange student and she was wondering if he could help her find her classes. Issei was a bit hesitant at first but Irina would poke her head out and actually encourage her friend to help the poor girl. There's a chance he could make some new friends from this interaction as well. Issei would listen to Irina and he would actually try to help the girl find her classes throughout the day. She didn't seem to really be paying attention to all the all the people that were around her and Issei though because a lot of the people they would a glance away from Issei, mainly out of fear you could say. But by the end of the day, Yuma would actually surprise Issei by asking, asking him out on a date and Issei would immediately accept. He was hoping that his luck with women was finally turning around. Yeah, uh, he was still a pervert, <laughs> yet yeah, th there wasn't really much changing that. Just not that much of a prey rate, more so something uh, um, akin to Kakashi, you could say. And although he was asked out on a date and he accepted, there was something in the back of his mind saying that maybe, just maybe, he should stay on a late. Irina was also a bit suspicious of this. It seemed too good to be true, I mean, this foreign exchange girl just walks up to Issei one day mentioning how she's new and that she's looking looking for help in terms of finding her classes and then by the end of the day, she asks him out on a date. Issei at this point has never, never been on a date. 
he the closest he's ever been on a date is with Irina and that's when they just went to watch the movies together or something along those lines. Issei mentioned how his friend was, was overreacting though, although at the back of his mind still he was kind of saying that hey maybe she isn't overreacting maybe you are underreacting he wasn't really sure but right now he was willing to take his chances and he would also say that it was probably god finally giving the boy a chance to mature this was finally Issei's chance now, after all Irina always mentioned god this gone that to Issei and now Issei was finally seeing a blessing coming his way so why is she trying to block his blessings so Irina she would stay silent she would watch her friend come out of his shell and become more confident in himself beyond his powers she would just sigh and also pray for Issei Pray that he would be safe, that and, didn't, and that he wouldn't cause any unnecessary harm to anyone he got into a conflict with. This part of the prayer, you see, was more directed to Yuma since she had a feeling things were about to take a turn for the worst real fast. She would be right in believing that in all honesty. You see, Issa and Yuma would go on a date at a carnival where the two really got along well with each other. By the end of the date, Issa would be genuinely happy. He felt as if this girl was the one for him. They would be walking through the pike when Yuma decided to turn and face Issa and ask him ask him a question this question would be very simple wouldn't you die for me this would have been Yuma's question and Issei would be a bit confused at first until he saw Yuma go through a transformation of sorts she would sprout a pair of black wings and generate a light spear in her hand Issei's eyes would widen he never expected to meet another mutant, especially one who wanted to kill him. Sure, he knew there were more like him out there, but mutants were still a minority overall. They were few and far in between. Rainer would offer Issei a second option though, that being to join her faction. Issei thought she was referring to a cult though. He wasn't interested and would verbally decline. Rainier would shrug mentioning how she didn't really care, it was pretty much his funeral and he was just digging his grave at this moment. Issei had sealed his fate and she would go on to try to throw the light spear at Issei, although for some reason her arm it wasn't moving. She was confused as to why that was the case. Suddenly she also began to have violent headaches as well. It was enough to cause her weapon to actually disperse and have Rainier collapse to the ground. The migraines were too strong for her to even stand properly. Issei would have had his hands in his pockets as he walked towards Rainier. His cocky side was beginning to come out now. Well, not really the cocky side, more so the, the bravado, you could say. <laughs> he increased the intensity of the headaches until she went unconscious. He wasn't planning on killing her, oh no, he had questions for this girl after all. And he figured that she would be more useful alive than dead if he wanted to get these answers. Maybe he could find out about the other mutants in the world considering how she talked about joining what seemed like a cult earlier. Was it a cult of mutants? Issei, Issei would bring Rainier to his basement. Honestly, his parents never questioned the thing. Where he would go on to interrogate her when she actually woke up. Issei would invite Tirana over as well to help with the interrogation process. 
When Rainer woke up, Issei would immediately go into interrogation mode against the fallen angel. At first, Rainer wanted to refuse to answer Issei's questions, but she would remember how easily Issei dealt with her back then. At the pike, even for a mutant, that was unusual. For each question she refused to answer though, Issei would increase the intensity of the gravity around her. It only took 10 minutes for the girl to actually crack. Despite Rainier, Rainier speaking of there being factions made up of angels, fallen angels and devils, Issei, he was still pretty, pretty skeptical. He believed that Rainier was telling her truth, keyword her. But it still seemed hard to believe that the religious talk Irina usually talked about turned out to be true. There had to be a catch or something. Perhaps there was another mutant out there that maybe brainwashed Rainer into believing this. After all, it didn't seem that Rainer was all that strong. But maybe Issei was just too strong. He, he wasn't too sure. That was Issei's conclusion, and even then, that was still a bit iffy. He supposed he would have to wait for them to come to him then, if it turned out that it was actually a mutant that brainwashed Rainer, who he assumed was also a mutant at the time. He figured that if he were to let them come to him, then maybe he could get something out of them as well, especially since he didn't really have much leads at the moment. Rainer, even with her fear of Issei now cemented, was still only a pawn in someone else's grand scheme, and therefore, you see, she didn't have all the answers. A pawn never understood the whole game. A pawn was disposable at best. Issei would act as if nothing happened for the rest of the week while at school, but by the end of the week though, Issei's presence wouldn't be requested by the Prince of, Ko of Kuo Academy, Kiba. He would explain that the Cold Research Club's president, president Rias, wanted to have a word with him. Issei would find this to be rather odd. What would the most popular girl in the school want with a nobody like Issei? Or really loner, I should say, like Issei, since, well, many people did know about who Issei was, but many people, they didn't want to associate with him. Irina also had her suspicions as well. Did Rias want to use Issei's powers or something? It was well known in the school that Issei was a mutant, but people usually just tried to avoid him, so to hear this girl actively try and, and get his attention was weird. And so, when Issei actually walked up to the front, well, not to their friend, but to the cult research club. He made sure to, well, bring Irina just in case he would actually meet and talk to Rias for the first time. This would be the beginning of a whole new story for Issei, especially when Rias was actually fully clothed and, well, Looking deeply into Issei's eyes, she had a serious expression, and this would simply be one thing that she would ask. Well, would you like to join my peerage? And yeah, that's all I have for right now, Time Clan. It is your boy King Time next time now. You guys already know the deal. If you like the video, uh, leave a like, maybe comment. Maybe comment a couple of things, and if you've been rocking with my content for a little while now, hey, you may as well just share this video and subscribe. But yeah, that's all I got for right now. Time clock, it's your boy King Die next time. Now, peace.